All right. Can we give one more round of applause to Alicia and Donald? That was amazing. Well, I wanted to start off by asking you both, um, how did you come to scoring silent films? Well, uh, Donnie's story goes way back, decades and decades, and he scored thousands of them. And uh, I started just 10 years ago with one before I met Donnie. So, uh, Donnie, how did you get to uh, this? I was in college in Michigan and was asked to play for Phantom of the Opera at the Film Society, having done a little Laurel and Hardy short uh, as a warm up in my dorm. And with that, I just plunged into this, and here I am. <laughs> there was a lot of stuff in between, like getting to play at MoMA right out of college and uh, had the good fortune to meet the guy that was working there, and that led to playing at other New York City venues like Lincoln Center and the Guggenheim and the Whitney and BAM and MoMA and so forth, and then San Francisco and Seattle and Italy and blah, blah. And in that Italy festival that I mentioned before, I met Alicia. And uh, that, the score that I played when we met, uh, I was commissioned to write it, but soon after I started, I found out, found out from my father that my grandparents met because my grandfather played for silent films at the theater, which is now Symphony Space on, on 96 and Broadway, <laughs> and she was in the audience. So it was Bechere. Yes, and so what is your process collaborating when you guys are creating a score together? Donnie, I know that you talked about that there are so many characters in this piece in particular. What's your process as you guys are watching the film and talking about what elements, what type of music do you want to include in the score you're creating? Well, we, we watch uh, separately and we write stuff that uh, we feel inspired to write, um, you know, certainly for characters, themes for different characters, themes for different ideas, uh, moods. Um, and then we pass them back and forth, and we g get into a room together and improvise and uh, work out each other's compositions. And it's just a whole sort of mishmash of a process, which eventually turns into a recording. A lot of it's done in the computer. Uh, a lot of improvising that turns into uh, more carefully constructed pieces, taking Alicia's themes and overlapping them with others and creating violin parts to go with piano and vice versa and making many, many uh, visual cues in the computer so we can keep uh, 180 pages of music going like it should. Yeah, since it's film scoring, what we do is we mark off moments that we want to highlight musically, and we write for that, and then we have a little trick in our computer there where there's some lines that conduct us at the right time. And this is definitely a piece that is built for that, right? There's a lot of these vignettes, a lot of these specific moments that help sort of break up the entire piece into feels like episodes of an overarching story. The chicken is one of our favorite episodes. Yeah, the funky chicken. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> the the exorcism and the the scene in the mikveh and the wedding i mean these are all it's a, it is an episodic yeah. film in in that sense but the same themes keep recurring and are transformed for as as the characters are going through different things and we hear that too in the score that you guys created we sort of hear those sort of themes return as those emotions and those elements and values sort of keep popping in and out um so as we know this film is not from the 1920s. It actually was created in 1992. And it's, it's amazing how to, it feels like a love letter to silent film. It feels like a love letter to that, that type of work. And so it actually made me think so much, Alicia, of your work with the cosmetics, where it's this love of, of Yiddish music, yet there's also a modern twist to it. So I'm curious to hear from both of you, how do you, how do you find the balance of celebrating the tradition, celebrating the original concept while also acknowledging the modern audience and how do you see sort of the future of Yiddish music and silent film? Well, there's a big question. Uh, <laughs> a lot of questions wrapped up in one. Um, it, what, what's interesting, it, it's true what, what you're saying about this film is that it's Yiddish culture with a wink, you know? And so 
Um, I, you know, in some ways we tried to match what she was doing by also presenting folklore, but um, but at the same time uh, weaving it in, into compositional stuff which is more complex than that and which nods to the fact that even the time period that she's faking was itself the beginning of modernity. And so there's plenty of, um, musically, of those sounds and harmonies that you know, would have been heard in the wider world. What do you think? What she said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. No, I mean, we, we, we both have a, a backgrounds in different types of music. And so when we're looking at a film, we're thinking, what, what is the style of, of this music in this scene at this moment? How is it different from what we just heard? What what uh, what are the what are the touchstones also in in our our listening to music over the past fifty sixty years? What what do we like? What we we like to bring to this? You know, we're not writing Ligeti and Penderecki uh, when we're when we're thinking of Eastern Europe, but we're we're thinking maybe. I mean, I'm thinking more Shostakovich always, and Bartok and Prokofiev, when I'm thinking about kind of biting harmonies uh, and putting those in inflections into the accompaniments and, and the, the harmonies of the Yiddish tunes that Alicia has written. Yeah, there's it, like a ton of musical fake lore to go with the you know silent fake lore. So I, I wrote a lot of tunes for this. Most of them we didn't even use, but um, you know that sound like old tunes, but they're new. Except uh, for the bum bum ba dee dum ba da, the nineteenth right. century partisan march. Well, that that one was a, a Yiddish socialist anthem, so, so it was the right thing for that scene with the Yiddish socialists. Do you have any plans for the music that made it to the cutting room floor? Yeah, actually, I'm going to make an album soon. I'm, I'm, I just, like, signed up for Kickstarter today. <laughs> I put it up there. But a bunch of the, the stuff that we didn't use is going to end up on the album. Yeah. Amazing. So in a moment, I'm going to turn... Oh, Donnie, did you oh, want to add? I was just going to say, uh, 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 not only an homage to silent film, but, uh, but Eleanor Anton is making an homage to her mother's childhood in a Polish settle with this film. It's it's really that kind of a love letter as well. So in a moment, I'm going to turn to the audience um, if you guys have any questions. But I will go back to the the seed that I planted earlier. And, I sh and I'll add that last night, I attended a screening at the Film Forum of a film called 32 Sounds. That's a plug for one of our partners. If you're interested, it was, it was really incredible. It was this amazing documentary about the concept of sound, the technology about sound recording. And they talked about how sound is actually one of the first senses that we experience in, you know, in the womb and everything, and how that's so deeply ingrained in us and how music and noise and sound affect our feelings. And so it kind of just clicked in, in thinking about our conversation tonight. So I kind of ask you guys, how does music, what, what do you feel is about music that impacts us in that way, that to add a score to a silent film really elevates the experience? Well, the, the importance of music to being human is like one of the great mysteries of science, but I never thought about that. That's really interesting. Like before you're feeling anything because you're in a, um, you know, anti-gravity sensory deprivation chamber of the womb, you're feeling motion you know, like dance as, you know, your uh, mother is walking and you're, you're hearing stuff. And it's, you know, before you see anything, um, you know, nobody knows why, but it's so, it's es essential and kind of useless in an evolutionary way. So it's, it's a mystery up there with what is consciousness. Mm. And, um, but it goes right to the emotional part of the brain. And so that's uh, certainly what uh, any film needs, and you know, a silent film in particular, is something to reach deep into the you know the viewer's emotional brain and press some buttons there. And if we grow up watching lots of visual media, we're absorbing the music by osmosis for all of those 
hours and hours of of whatever they are, TV shows and commercials and videos and 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 movies and you know as as someone who who grew up listening to all kinds of music and watching all kinds of things it just all went in and and then at a certain point it started coming out again and uh i i don't know whether it's a synesthesia is that the what the what the adjective is but i mean it for me i watch an image a moving image and i have sounds mm. that just spontaneously come up and then the process is a sorting out one is this the score is this is this the right sound and sometimes i'll just make up stuff that I know I'm going to throw out and just to have something, whether it's just a beat or a tune or, or whatever I can come up with, sometimes improvising, recording it, listening back and saying, does that sound like the score or is it my imposition on the film? You know, there's, there's many people writing all kinds of music for films these days, including many silent films. If you, if you go to YouTube and you can see 20, 30 different scores for the same film you can see what strikes you mm. what what resonates with you and some people are really into the film and some people are into the music and say oh well let's put some visuals with my wonderful music <laughs> and that that's not our and tries not to be our uh our working method here we're looking at the film and thinking all the time the music is secondary the music is secondary but it's important because it affects you whether you're listening consciously to it or not, you're still going to be affected by this turn of phrase, this harmony. Amazing. Uh, does anyone have any questions in the audience? Juliet can come with a microphone. Well, I'll add to that, and some people object to that. I mean, there's another school of thought that silent films should have no music at all, and that we, that we are, impo you know, that we're very, uh, What's the word? Nervy. Very, no, very, yeah, chutzpahdik. <laughs> very presumptuous to say we're gonna we're gonna show you what this film is about musically. So and we're gonna we're gonna yes. twist there, your emotions. We'll bring, we'll bring the microphone just because we're we're re we're recording it. Yeah. So we should just play ambient music in one key <laughs> in one in one monotonous uh, tempo for an hour and a half. That you were playing anything at all for an hour and a half is <laughs> extraordinary. <laughs> that the just the uh, the tour de force of your um, endurance, and it was gorgeous, really Thank gorgeous. You. I'm curious about the f the music credits that were rolling in at the end of the film. Right when the film came out in '92, it had another score, uh -huh. and so contractually they have to that 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 was the the film, and so we're looking at the film the way it was made then. Did Even though we're not hearing that music, although on the on the Blu-ray, both of bo both of oh. the scores are represented, okay. as they are on our other two two films. Uh, there, each one of those films has another score in addition to our That's own, very cool. which you can listen to. And at what point in your process did you listen to the other score? We did never. Good. <laughs> <laughs> not in the process. Not in the process. Oh, you you listened to it? What you listened to it? Not the whole way through. No. I'm 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 too impressionable, you know. That it's just I'm not masochistic enough. <laughs> so so this Could is could be of great. Who knows? I've yeah, never I listened think. to it. So this is a pro so the process because I don't really I guess I don't really understand the details. It this is a restoration uh, restoration. This is yes milestone and films Dennis Doros oh, okay. or well actually not Dennis but Dennis's company <laughs> when finally we ran into him they live in New Jersey and they were here on the street. Um, uh, Ross Lipman, who works for Milestone, restored this film from the 16 millimeter right. uh, original. And so they commissioned you to write this. And then Milestone, for whom I've done many other films, right. commissioned me and Alicia to to rescore it because they weren't happy with either the sound and and the composition of the original score. Okay, okay. thank you. Well. Alicia, Donald, thank you guys so much. Thank this you. It's been such a pleasure. And we look forward to having you back at the JCC for we your would next love that. film. Thank you for Thanks having so us. Thanks so much, thank Lauren. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, so much. Looking forward Have to seeing you back soon. Have a great night. Thank you. Buy our DVDs so we don't.